Today we're going to build on top of our Docker machine tutorial and use the Docker toolbox to provision a server in the cloud and deploy a Ruby on Rails application to it. Our goals for today are to create a Docker host in DigitalOcean and to deploy a Rails application to that Docker host so that it's publicly accessible. We're not going to do DNS stuff, so it's not going to have a domain name, but you are going to be able to access it through an IP address and, and the port. Up to this point, we've only used Docker in development and we've seen how to package our own images and how to use Docker Compose to orchestrate things in the development setting, but uh, there's nothing to stop us from using Docker Compose to orchestrate deployments also. We're gonna do a very basic deployment today of a Rails application that we used in one of the previous tutorials. The Rails application that we'll be deploying today is going to be from our learning to use Docker in development tutorial. So if you go to github.com slash coder journey slash o3 dash learn to use docker and development, you can grab the code there. Uh, you can clone or download. I have git installed, so I'm going to copy this link and uh, clone this. So I'm going to say git clone, paste in this link, and then put a dot. And this is just so I don't have a learn to use docker and development directory. It'll just put the blog directory and the readme where I'm currently at. And so now we'll cd into blog. And we'll take a look at what we have here. So if we open this up, we have our Docker file, which just to get a refresher here, uses Ruby 2.3, installs the Postgres client. Um, and then we copy in our gem stuff. We go fetch our gems, copy in all of our source code. And then we finally run the Rails server and bind it to 0000, which is just kind of a technical detail you kind of have to do in Docker land. Um, in our Docker Compose file, we start a DB service and an app service, and we map the, the ports and wire these two containers together with the depends on, so that's looking pretty good, but it does look like we use an ENV file. So we have an ENV file that has the Postgres user and Postgres password, and those will be automatically shared into both of the containers here that are referencing this env file.env. Normally, you wouldn't store your .env file in your source code repository because it has secrets in it. Uh, but since this is for example purposes, I did it just so everybody would have what they needed. But if you were going like working on a real application, don't do this. Um, everybody on your team, you should have some way to set them up with the secrets they need, but do not uh, actually store the .env file. Based on everything we have here, though, we should be good to actually deploy this. So where we are actually going to deploy this is to DigitalOcean. And if you're not familiar with DigitalOcean, they're a, uh, a hosting provider that you can use to, to spin up servers in a bunch of different areas across the world. Um, I'll, I'll have a link in the description and in the blog post that will um, give you a free $10 so you don't have to pay anything to spin up a server and follow along today. Uh, disclaimer, if you end up spending money with DigitalOcean, then eventually I'll get a little bit of a kickback, but um, that's not what I'm doing this for. I just wanna let you guys spin up servers without costing you any money. So going back in here, I'm going to use Docker machine now to spin up the server in DigitalOcean. Our Docker machine command is going to be a little bit longer than it was the last time we used this with VirtualBox because we have some extra options, but let's see what it looks like. So if we type in Docker machine create, and then this time our driver is going to be DigitalOcean. And then we'll pass DigitalOcean access token and I have this stored to DO token so that you guys can't read my access token and then we'll also do digital ocean size and then this will be one gigabyte and then we'll name our machine blogs this is going to run off and interact with the digital ocean API and like it says it can take a few minutes so I'm going to pause and I'll pop back over once it's finished all right, our Docker machine has been created, and we just need to set ourselves up to use it. So if we eval, well, actually, I guess first we'll, we'll just run Docker machine and blog, just see what it outputs. It outputs that, um, and that all looks good. You never want to eval if you don't know what you're sending into your machine. There's so many things that could go wrong with that particular approach. So we're going to eval this just to set those environment variables so that we can access it. 
Now that we're set up to talk to our Docker machine, if we run Docker PS, there shouldn't be anything there. If we run Docker images, there also shouldn't be anything there. Uh, we can spin up our database because that's based off of an image anyway, so it won't be a big deal. So if we run docker compose up d db, this should go and it's going to need to fetch Postgres and then it will spin it up for us. All right, now that we have Postgres up, uh, we're going to need to build our image. So we'll do docker compose build app and this will go and fetch all the Ruby gems and stuff. So this is going to take a while too. Okay, now that we're finished building our image for the app container, we can actually go and create our database before we try to spin up the application. So for that, we'll run docker compose run dash dash rm just to make sure that it gets rid of the container that it's going to spin up. App rake db create db migrate. Hmm. All right, so that, that's a little bit of a weird error. We know that we copied our code in to USR source app. So all of our stuff should be there. So let's take a look at our Docker Compose just to make sure that everything's all right. This might not be entirely obvious as to what happened with our, our previous error there, but it's actually this right here. It's this volumes thing. And so what this is saying is that we want to sh share through something as uh, slash USR SRC app. And this happens regardless of where the actual Docker host is. So in the case of us working with VirtualBox locally, this works fine because it mounts our current directory, which is already inside of the VM, to this point. And that's, that's fine and dandy. But since we're working on a remote host, we can't do this from our local machine to the host. So what it's doing is it's actually just basically replacing this with nothingness. So we have to remove this. But the problem is, is that makes this really annoying for us to work with in development because we can't make any changes and have them show up inside of the container. So the, the thing we're gonna do to actually fix this problem is we're gonna have two separate Docker Compose files, one of them for using in development, which would be our default one, and then one of them that we're gonna use when we actually go to deploy, which we're gonna do less often than we do development. So for that, let's just duplicate this. And we're going to call this docker compose dot prod. And we're going to remove this line. There are some other things we should do while we're here anyway. And that would be that we should actually probably deploy in production mode instead of uh, deploying in the development uh, environment for Rails. So for that, we'll set up another environment here and we'll say Rails env. We'll call that production. And this just sets the flag inside of Rails so it knows to use the right environment file and behave a little bit differently when we go to actually ship this off to our digital ocean box. Now we'll bounce back to our terminal here and we'll say docker compose dash f docker compose dot prod dot yaml. And then we'll run the same thing. So we'll do run dash dash rm app rake db create db migrate. Oh boy. So if we scroll up again, you can see that it looks like we can't connect to Postgres. Um, and then if we continue going down here, we're going to connect to production. We're going to want blog. Uh, password's currently nil, which is a little weird. And host is nil. So this is our problem, is that we're trying to connect to nothingness here. So that means we have to change something else. So we bounce over and we go into the config database YAML right here. You'll notice that the production doesn't mimic the default setup here. And, and that's actually what's causing our problem. Uh, additionally, we're, we're also not setting the, the host. But what we can do is this default is pretty much what we want. We want a Postgres user, Postgres password, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, we don't actually want this username and password here. So we're going to get rid of these. We're going to save the file. And then this also means we have to we have to pass through this Postgres host part. So we'll go to our env and set our Postgres host to equal db. And this will work because uh, db will be registered to the, the container um, inside our Etsy host file. So if you were to ping db from our app container, it would, it would connect to the right thing. So this, this will just work out for us. So we have Postgres host here, Postgres host here. Let's try this again.
Still having an error. What's the reason behind that one? Okay, the password's not coming through. Weird. So, Postgres password, Postgres host database. This should this should all be coming through. So this means we have we have something going on that's a little funky. So we look at our ENV again. Postgres password still there. Ah, uh, okay. So one thing we didn't do is we changed a file that's supposed to be inside of our container, but we didn't rebuild. So we're going to have to do that now. We'll come down here, and we will build the app. This shouldn't take nearly as long this time. Yeah, ooh, super fast. That's really nice. And then we'll do this again. So we'll run our rake db create and migrate. And there we go, it created our production database. Now we're ready to spin up our application. So we're gonna do docker compose, f docker compose dot prod yaml, and then this time we'll do up app. And we'll just do up so that we can see the logs kind of filter by as we, as we see things. All right, looks like our uh, application has started. I have another tab open over here, uh, but it's not connected to my Docker machine, so I'm going to have to do that now. So Docker machine and blog. This will just let us uh, interact with that so we can see, like, oh, look, we have our Postgres and our blog running. Um, but what we actually want is we want our IP address. So we want the Docker machine IP for blog. Okay, we'll copy that. We'll go back to our browser. Ugh. An unhandled low-level error has occurred. The application logs might have details. This is pretty helpful. Uh, not something we should be showing the customers of our application when this thing goes to production, but uh, it's going to help us out right now. So bouncing back over to our logs, if we look here, we have a runtime error missing secret key base for production environment. Uh, set this value and config secrets YAML. This is incredibly specific and super helpful to us. So let's let's do exactly what it says. So that means we need to go to our secrets YAML. Ah, okay, cool. It's an environment variable. So this actually means we don't have to rebuild our uh, container. Just we have to add an environment variable that we're we're sharing through. So if we go back to env and we share through a secret key base. We should be good to go, but we're going to want to generate this. And I can show you a nice little way to do that right now using Ruby. So if we run Docker PS again, um, we have this blog app image. We can use this to do kind of a run -off one thing. So we want to run dash dash RM. Um, what we want to run is rake secret. And this generates us an actual uh, cryptographic secret that we can then use to whoops, to place as our secret key base. So we'll save this, then we'll come back here and we'll control C to stop our running container. And we'll just spin it back up again. Okay, bounce back over to our browser and reload the page. And we get hello from Docker. So this means our application is running in the production environment on an actual node that's uh, publicly accessible. I'm going to tear this down by the time anybody watches this, so nobody's going to actually be able to go to this URL. Bummer. But we, we successfully deployed a Rails application using Docker and Docker Compose and Docker Machine to even spin up the server. So we were able to do all of this from um, the comfort of our own command line. Don't get me wrong in thinking that this is an actual good deployment. There's a lot more we should have done with deploying our Rails application. We should probably have a web server like Nginx in front of it to serve logs. And um, we, we need to set up our logging properly. And there's a laundry list of things that fall into the like ops kind of thinking that we didn't go and do. But what we did do is we did get the application to actually run in the production environment on a machine that's not our own machine. And it was pretty easy, all things considered, because of the way that Docker lets us share our code and our configuration through images. 
I probably wouldn't use Docker Compose to necessarily build the image on the box that you want to deploy to. I would use Docker Compose to build an image, push it to a registry like a Docker Hub, and then pull it down to the machine that you want to run it on. But this is still pretty good. I hope that you liked today's video and that it was helpful for you. Um, if you want to point me in the direction of a topic that you'd like to learn about, just let me know. Um, you can comment or you can send me an email. Uh, if you'd be so kind to like, share, and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And don't forget to head over to coderjourney.com and subscribe to the mailing list in case I have any blog posts that might be interesting to you outside of just the video content. So enjoy using Docker for your deployments.